In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn about operational amplifiers or op amps, their introduction, block diagram of an op amp, different parameters of op amp, meaning of positive and negative feedback, and different applications of op amp as inverting amplifier, non inverting amplifier, summing amplifier, difference amplifier, op amp as a differentiator, op amp as an integrator, voltage to current converter and lastly op amp as a waveform generator. An amplifier is a circuit that accepts the input signal and produces the amplified version of that signal at the output. The best example of an amplifier is a radio which we use in everyday life. An operational amplifier is a circuit which performs different operations along with the amplification. Let's study the block diagram of an op amp. It has different blocks such as double ended differential amplifier, single ended differential amplifier, emitter follower, level translator and an output driver. Let's see each block in detail now. The first block is a double ended differential amplifier. It provides maximum voltage gain. It has two inputs and two outputs. Hence, it is called as a double ended differential amplifier. The second block is an intermediate stage known as single ended differential amplifier. It provides an additional gain to an amplifier. It has only one output. Hence, the name single ended. The third block is an emitter follower. It has unity gain, high input resistance and a low output resistance. It matches the output of the amplifier stage with the input of the last stage. The last stage is an output driver. It supplies a large output voltage or current. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. The practical form of an op amp is an IC with 8 pins numbered from 1 to 8. The black dot on the left side represents that we must start counting the pins from that dot serially. Out of those 8 pins, only 7 pins are used. Out of those 7 pins, 4 pins are for input and 1 pin is for output. Hence, the name of this IC is IC741. This op amp is represented as a triangular structure with all seven pins as shown. Pin number six is for output. This IC needs two power supplies as positive and negative which is given at pin numbers seven and pin number four respectively. Between pin number one and five an offset resistor is connected which is explained a little later. Pin number 2 is called as an inverting terminal and pin number 3 is called as a non-inverting terminal. Let's see the use of an offset resistor now. An op amp is also called as a differential amplifier because it amplifies the difference between the input signals. Ideally, when both the inputs are same, the output should be zero. But practically, there exists a non-zero output. We adjust the resistor R in such a way that when same inputs are applied, the output will be zero. Hence, it is called as an input offset resistor. Moving forward, we learn different parameters of op amp as voltage gain, input impedance, output impedance, input offset voltage, input offset current, input bias current and bandwidth. Let's start with the voltage gain. It is defined as the ratio of output voltage to input voltage. The second term is an input impedance. The resistance offered by the input terminals of an op amp is called as an input impedance. The voltage drop at the input of an op amp must be very high. Hence, 
the input impedance of an op amp is always very high due to equation V equals I into R. The third term is an output impedance. The resistance offered by the output of an op amp is called as an output impedance. Generally, an output device like a speaker is connected next to an op amp. Hence, it is necessary that all the output of an op amp must be passed to the next device. In other words, the voltage drop at output must be zero. Hence, output impedance must be as low as possible. The fourth term that we learn is an input offset voltage. When input to an op amp is zero, the output should be zero ideally. But if it's not zero, we need to apply some DC voltage at the input terminal to force the output voltage to be zero. This applied voltage is called as an input offset voltage. The next term we study is an input offset current. The difference between the currents into the two input terminals when the output is held at zero is called as an input offset current. The sixth term is an input bias current. The average of the currents into the two input terminals with the output at zero volts is called as an input bias current. The last term is a bandwidth. The range of frequencies for which an op amp can be used is called as a bandwidth of an op amp. When we differentiate the ideal op amp with the practical op amp, we find some change in the parameter values, which is represented by the following table. We know that any circuit has two major parameters such as input and output. A condition in which some part of the output is fed back to the input is called as a feedback. In case of an op amp, we have two types of feedbacks such as positive feedback and a negative feedback. When some part of an output is fed back to a non-inverting terminal of an op amp, it is called as a positive feedback. And when some part of an output is fed back to the inverting terminal of an op amp, it is called as a negative feedback. Resistor RF is called as a feedback resistor. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Let's study what we mean by a virtual ground concept. The input impedance of an op amp is very high. Hence, an op amp never draws any current at its input and input current is always zero amperes. For current to be zero, the voltage must be zero. Let's assume that some input is applied to an inverting terminal keeping a non-inverting terminal at the ground. Even though the input is applied, an inverting terminal also behaves as a ground terminal at node A. This concept is called as a virtual ground concept. Let's see some applications of this IC741 op amp. It is used as an inverting amplifier and a non-inverting amplifier. It can be used for different mathematical operations like summing amplifier, difference amplifier, integrator, differentiator, voltage to current converter, etc. Let's start with the use of an op amp as an inverting amplifier. When the input is given to an inverting terminal and a non-inverting terminal is connected to the ground, an op amp works as an inverting amplifier. Input current of an op amp is zero, so no current flows into an op amp at node A. Applying KCL at node A, I in equal to II plus IF, but II equals zero. Hence, I in equals IF. Therefore, V in minus V A upon R F equals V A minus V out upon R F. But according to a virtual ground concept, V A equals zero. Hence, the equation becomes V in upon R in equals minus V out upon R F. Thus, 
v out equals minus r f upon r in into v in. The ratio r f upon r in is the gain of an op amp and a minus sign indicates that the output is the amplified version of the input signal, hence the name inverting amplifier. Usually an amplifier is used in an inverting mode only. Let's move to a non-inverting amplifier. In this case, an inverting terminal is connected to the ground and a non-inverting terminal is connected to the input. Applying KCL at node A, I in equals II plus IF, but II equals zero, hence I in equals IF. Therefore, zero minus VA upon R in equals V out minus V A upon R F. But by virtual ground concept, V A equals V B equals V in. Therefore, V out upon R F minus V in upon R F minus V in upon R in equals zero. Rearranging the equation in terms of V out. Thus we get a final equation as V out equal to one plus R F upon R in into V in. Here, 1 plus R F upon R in acts as a gain and as there is no inversion of signal, this amplifier is called as a non-inverting amplifier. An op amp is also used for mathematical operations. We will start with an op amp as a summing amplifier. We have three inputs as V1, V2 and V3 given to an inverting terminal of an op amp with the currents as I1, I2 and I3. Applying KCL at node X, I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals IF. V1 minus VX upon R1 plus V2 minus VX upon R2 plus V3 minus VX upon R3 equals Vx minus V out upon Rf. But from virtual ground concept, Vx equals zero. Therefore, V1 upon R1 plus V2 upon R2 plus V3 upon R3 equals minus V out upon Rf. Rearranging the equation in terms of V out, we get V out equals minus Rf upon R1 into V1 plus RF upon R minus RF upon R1 into V1 plus RF upon R2 into V2 plus RF upon R3 into V3. If R1 equals R2 equals R3 equals R, then we get the final equation for the output. As we can see, an output is an amplified version of the sum of all the input signals. It is called as a summing amplifier. The next application of an op amp is a difference amplifier. Here, we apply KCL at both the nodes, node A and node B. Applying KCL at node B, V2 minus VB upon R2 equals VB upon R3. Therefore, VB upon R3 plus VB upon R2 equals V2 upon R2. Rearranging the terms and writing the equation in terms of VB, VB equals V2 into R3 upon R2 plus R3. Name this equation as 1. Applying KCL at node A, V1 minus VA upon R1 equals VA minus V out upon RF. V1 upon R1 minus VA upon R1 equals VA upon RF minus V out upon RF. Therefore, minus V out upon RF equals VA into 1 upon RF plus 1 upon R1 minus V1 upon R1. Thus, we get the following equation for V out, which we call as equation 2. We know that VA equals VB. Thus, we substitute the value of VB into equation 2 and get the following equation. Let RF upon R1 equal to R3 upon R2 equal to any variable Z. Therefore, R3 equals Z into R2. 
Substituting the value, we get the equation for v out in terms of z. Rearranging the terms, we get the equation for v out as v out equals z into v2 minus v1. If we consider z as a gain of op amp, then the output is an amplified version of the difference between two inputs. Hence, it is called as a difference amplifier. The next application of an op amp is a differentiator. For this, we replace the input resistor with the capacitor as shown. Applying KCL at node A, IF equals IC. From the diagram, the current IF equals VA minus V out upon R and the current flowing through a capacitor is C into DVC by DT. Hence, VA minus V out upon R equals C into D by DT of V in minus VA. But VA equals 0. Thus, minus V out upon R equals C into DV in by DT. Thus, V out equals minus R into C into DV in by DT. As we can see, if we take R into C as a gain of an amplifier, then the output is the differentiation of an input. Hence, it is called as a differentiator. The next use of an op amp is an integrator. If we interchange the position of the capacitor and the resistor of a differentiator circuit, we get the circuit of an op amp as an integrator. Applying KCL at node A, I in equals IC. Hence, V in minus V A upon R in equals minus C into DVC by DT. Therefore, V in minus V A upon R in equals minus C into D by DT of V out minus V in. But V A equals 0. Thus, V in by R in equals minus D by DT of V out. Rearranging the equations in terms of V out, we get D V out equals minus 1 upon R in into C into V in DT. Integrating both the sides, we get V out equal to minus 1 upon R in into C into integration of V in into DT. If 1 upon R in into C is the gain, then the output is an integration of an input. Thus the name integrator. The next application of an op amp is as a voltage to current converter. In this, we represent the output current in terms of an input voltage. The circuit of the voltage to current converter is as shown. Applying KCL at node V2, V out minus V2 upon R plus 0 minus V2 upon R equals 0. Therefore, V out minus V2 upon R equals V2 upon R. Rearranging the terms, we get the first equation as V out equal to 2 into V2. Applying KCL at node V1, V in minus V1 upon R plus V out minus V1 equals V1 upon RL. We rearrange the equation in terms of V in upon R, but V out equals 2 into V2. Thus, V in upon R equals V1 upon RL plus 2V1 upon R minus 2V2 upon R. Also, V1 equals V2. Thus, V in equals V1 upon RL. But V1 upon RL equals IL, the load current. Thus, IL equals V in upon R. As seen, the load current is represented in terms of an input voltage. This circuit is called as a voltage to current converter. An op amp can also be used as a waveform generator. Here, it generates different waveforms, such as a square wave, triangular wave, etc.
First, we will see an op-amp as a square wave generator. The schematic diagram for this application is as shown. As we can see, a capacitor C is connected to an inverting terminal and resistances RA and RB are connected to a non-inverting terminal. Resistor R is connected as a negative feedback to the inverting terminal forming the RC circuit. As soon as the op amp is supplied with the supply voltages plus V and minus V, we get some output as V out. Ideally without any input applied, the output should be zero, but practically we get some non-zero output. RA and RB form a voltage divider network. Thus, if initial V out is non-zero, we get voltage across VB also as non-zero. Thus, we get a positive input at the non-inverting and inverting terminals and the output gets amplified by its gain, say AV, and reaches its maximum value, VO max. Thus, we get the positive half of the square wave. As we have a non-zero input at the inverting terminal now, a capacitor also starts charging. It will charge continuously till its voltage becomes greater than VB. As soon as voltage VC is greater than VB, the inverting input becomes greater than the non-inverting input and hence op amp output switches to negative voltage and gets amplified till minus VO max. Thus, we get the negative half of the square wave. This is the application of an op amp as a square wave generator. Now we see an op amp as a triangular wave generator. We have already seen that the output of the integrator is a triangular wave if the input given to it is a square wave. Thus, to construct a triangular wave generator, we combine two circuits such as a square wave generator followed by an integrator as shown. And at the output of an integrator, we get a triangular signal. Let's see what all we learned in this chapter. An operational amplifier is a 8-pin IC with 7 active pins, 4 input pins and 1 output pin. Thus, it is named as IC741. Block diagrams of an op amp has different blocks such as double-ended differential amplifier, single-ended differential amplifier, emitter follower and an output driver. The ideal and practical values of parameters of an op amp vary as shown below. When a part of an output is fed back to the input, it is called as a feedback. An op amp has two types of feedbacks such as positive feedback and a negative feedback. In general, the output of an op amp is V out equals AV into V in where AV is the gain of an op amp. An op amp when used as an inverting amplifier produces the inverted and amplified version of an input signal. When used as a non-inverting amplifier, an op amp only amplifies the input signal at the output. A summing amplifier produces the output signal as the gain into the sum of all the input signals. The output of difference amplifier is the amplified version of the difference between a non-inverting and an inverting terminal input. Interchanging the positions of a capacitor and a resistor gives us two different circuits such as differentiator and integrator. An op amp can also be used as a voltage to current converter where load current is expressed in terms of input voltage. Op amp can be used as a square wave generator and also as a triangular wave generator which is a combination of a square wave generator followed by an integrator.